Hello and welcome. My name is Matthias and in today's video I will be showing you another cool feature that Power Automate Desktop also has, which is interaction with um, websites. So in today's video I will show you how to use a website like TradingView to get stock information on the top gainers in the Americas, um, extract this table of information and save it into an Excel file. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, and a lot of cool tricks um, on the way. I've built the flow just so you can see it uh, before we start diving into it. So let's just run it here so you can see what what's going to happen. And then after the demonstration, we will start from the beginning and build it together. And then we'll close it then. All right, so that's it. And then let's just open up the let's open up the file. You can see here it's saved as the date time and then underscore top gainers, just so we know for reference um, what date this was extracted, which is nice to know. We'll just format it a little bit so it looks nice. Uh, but this is the end result. So without further ado, let's go back. We'll save this and then let's start from the beginning. So we'll create a new flow. Let's call it trading view because this is the, obviously I'm not affiliated with it, but this is um, one of the research uh, websites that I'm using sometimes to do um, stock analysis and stuff. So let's just take an offset in that because that's, an, that's a, a website that I know. Um, before we start diving too much into anything, Let's just open up Paint, as I normally do. And let's write down in steps brief what it is that we want to do. So we want to open website. And then we could, for simplicity, we could just go directly to the website itself. But um, because I also want to showcase how you can interact with UI elements on websites, um, we will go just simply to the to the base website and then we'll move around with clicks to get to where we want to. That's not a necessity at all, but it's just a fun thing to do. So we will click uh, twice, I think it is, uh, to get to where we want to. Um, and then we will extract table data from within the website, uh, write some things to Excel. Uh, and then we will uh, save file with date, time, name. And for us to be able to do the last step, we actually have to do something in the beginning, which is to just get current date and time and then format that or convert it date, time a bit. So those are prerequisites before we start building the actual flow. So, as, ref as that, with that as reference, let's go into the um, main flow of Power Automate Desktop and let's start building. So, as I said, we need first and foremost to get the current date and time. This is always, it's a nice trick to know uh, and it's very simple um, and it becomes handy when you have to save files and you want to do it in a, in a structured and, and kind of sortable way. Um, we want to get the date and the time of the system time zone, that's fine. It's just whenever, um, whatever time it is on the machine that uh, the flow runs on. So that's fine. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to convert. We want to find the action convert and we want to find the one that says convert date time to text. And what we want to convert is the current date time, which is the variable we've saved in the, in the first action up here. So we make reference to that either by writing it like this current date time, that'll reference it. Otherwise we can click here and then just double click on the variable, whatever works the easiest. Uh, and we don't want to use the standard format because the standard format is like this or any of the other ones here. We want to make our own because we can be selective with our date time formats. So we want to implement something that works in our case right here. And what I normally do is this type of format, T, 
so, so year, 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 year for the years, mm for month, dd for dates, and then t for time, and then we'll add a uh, our hour, we'll do it, our hour big, a uh, minute, minute, second, second, and then a set in the end. So this is what we want to change it to. And we'll uh, create the variable format a date time, and that'll that'll be the, the the variable that we will use when we have to save the file um, in the end of the flow. But before we get to there, there's a couple of other steps. So first step is, which we also wrote in the paint um, file, is that we want to open up the website. So we'll find the launch uh, Chrome. In this instance, it can be whatever. Uh, we want to launch a new instance, and we just want to get the uh, trading view the base or the root let's just put it over here uh, on the website we want to maximize it and that'll produce a variable let's just change that up to trading trading view browser just so we have for good housekeeping measures not something that's required but it just and I can't spell trading view browser for good measure. So we have that open. Now what we want to do next is that we wanted to click twice. <laughs> um, so we want to use the action that's called uh, UI element and it's called hover mouse over UI element. Let's use that. And then we need to and we do that instead of, because we don't actually have to click here, we just have to find this, find here, and then we have to click on this, but we don't have to click on any of these for it to pop up. So that's why we're just, um, we're hovering over it. So we need to add the UI element that we have to hover over, and we do that by clicking add UI element, and then we'll drag this into the page, and we'll find the markets. Let's just get it adjusted here. And then we'll control click. It seems like it caught it. And then we'll do it again, but now with a new element. So we'll add another UI element. And then we'll find this. Control click. It can be a little bit slow, but that's fine. That's a lot to process. We'll save that. And now we don't want to hover anymore. We want to click the link on a web page. So click click anything on a web page. So we have to specify what. Uh, and we, for us to do that, we need to add another UI element because we don't have this yet. So we'll go back here, hover, hover, and then top gainers. This is the one that we want to click. So we'll click control and click it. So it captures it. And the click type that we want to send is just a left click. That should do the trick. So we'll save that. Now, good process is to just save it. And then we'll just run it to make sure that we're all on the same page. Hover, hover, click, and then the flow is basically done. Uh, and that's fine. Let's close the other one we have here. And only have a look at this. So now we're in on the page. We could have gone to just simply this website instead of having to click, 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 but it's just a bit of fun. Um, and what we now want to extract is this table. So, and it's very nicely formatted as you can see. Uh, so it shouldn't cause us a lot of problems. There's a little bit of extra. There's some analyst ratings out here, which we also want to get. Uh, and we should be able to get all of it by simply using uh, the action called extract data. No, it has to be the web data extraction. So extract data from web page, not from window. Uh, and it has to be this instance. And what we have to do now is that we have to open up this, this is a bit of an annoying thing, or it can be at least, um, because 
when you have the action implemented into your flow before you click save if we go back and we say yeah that looks fine and then we save it we get an error message because we haven't specified what to extract yet but there's no obvious reason or obvious um, interaction for us needed to specify where that happens um, but we do that by simply bringing it to the front of the screen the website or the stuff that we want to extract and then this pops up by itself so we have to bring it to the forefront here and once this is up what we do is that we can see that it's all formatted in a nice uh, table so we can right click this and then instead of extracting the element value itself we can just say extract entire html table and then this is what's then shown up in our um, extraction preview it looks a little bit odd because the columns are very very uh, narrow but this should be fine so we can click finish and then we can say synopsis we can see here that it says synopsis of data to be extracted extract html table records in the form of a 12 column table and that sounds about right so we click save um, variable name is fine we don't have to change it um, and then for good measure we want to close the web browser now so we don't have it open and if we run it multiple times uh, we remember that we keep closing it so what we want to do from here is that we actually just and i just saw that uh, we want to make sure that we don't store the data in a variable but in an excel spreadsheet that is very very important and it just took me uh, 10 minutes to troubleshoot this um, but we want to extract the data and then we want to save it in excel sh excel sheet um, and now we can then use the functionality to insert row to excel worksheet um, and we want to reference the excel instance that we just created up here and we want to use the first row in the sheet to start putting in all the data that we've extracted so good housekeeping let's just save the flow and let's run it to see where we are if we still agree with all the steps being taken finds the elements clicks that's good and now it extracted the whole uh, HTML table and it stored it into uh, an Excel sheet now we haven't specified that it needs to do anything else add any header headers or save the Excel file so now it's just an, an, an open normal book so that's but that's good um, from here we will do a couple of more steps before we close off this um, before we close off this uh, video so what we'll do is that we we'll want to write a couple of things into the Excel word, uh, worksheet so we'll find the write to Excel worksheet and then we want to we still reference to the same uh, worksheet that's fine and then what we want to do is we want to if we go back into the trading view website we're missing we're missing the headers as you saw in the Excel file which is a bit problematic so what we want to do is that we want to add these different headers to the output file um, so even though this actually says simple this is the simple and we're getting this so we'll just call this the name on column one row one on specified cell so if we do that now and then we add the name to the column so that's good what we want to do now is just to add names to these other columns and then save the workbook and then that'll be it so the way for us to do that is to simply take this and just copy it down and then we just have to find the uh, 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 then we just have to find the names of the headers so we'll open this one and say we don't want to have it called name we we'll call it change and it should be on column two change and then this one is price Oh, 
Analyst rating on 12. So now we should be good to go. The only thing that we're missing is to close the Excel file. So we'll close the instance and then we want to save it. And here is where we want to reference the formatted uh, date time that we created. So we'll just take the uh, folder path of where we want to save it, do a backslash, and then we want to reference the variable formatted date time, and then just underscore, give it a name, top gainers USA. USA. And that should be it. So fingers crossed, we have an empty folder where the output file needs to go. Uh, let's see if this doesn't work. We'll save the workflow. And maybe we'll just add in here in the end before we close anything down. We'll drag in a wait action just so we can admire the hopefully perfectly uh, formatted uh, with headers Excel file before we close it, uh, save it and close it. So let's run it. And I'm just tracking it over on the other screen. For you to be able to see, we should go into markets, stocks, top gainers, extract the table and close down the web browser, add all the headers. And now we're waiting for five seconds. And it looks good. Close it. Float done. That was it. Hopefully this was of some value to you. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Oh, and I just realized that I forgot. There's no camera on now, but that's fine. I just forgot to show you uh, the file itself. And as you saw just before, it looks like this. Uh, nicely nicely formatted uh, and you can see that it's saved as the date time also so that's really nice this also allows us if we want to cascade this up into power automate cloud and trigger this on a scheduled basis so let's say we do it every day or every week or every month then this allows us to find um, the most recent uh, file in an easy manner just wanted to add that. Thanks.